Hi, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. It's a pleasure to see you as a partners, friends, and participants. So we are here to introduce our new product. It's a PT61 camera. You can observe it in my hand. And uh, let me introduce my partners and colleagues. So Dmitry uh, is a topadron guy, and uh, Ira Dvir, he's a representative from uh, our big partner, uh, Agravin Company. Today we split our presentation in uh, in parts. Uh, first of all, uh, introduce our product, uh, demonstrated our workflow, and uh, Ira will uh, specialize on the Agravink uh, lenses, uh, multispectral lenses. PT61, three camera is in one. Let me uh, share, describe our success. We started our activity in uh, 2019 uh, with uh, post-processing software and PPK kit. On 2020, we introduced our LiDAR on the market. First introduction with a full workflow as well with our post-processing software. 2022 is famous so that we presented to the market our PT61 camera, 61 megapixels camera, with solution for bathymetry, aquameter, but it's slightly different. And this year, we would like to present it to you a combo solution in terms of uh, PT61. So what is it? The full frame camera with mechanical shutter based on uh, 61 megapixels camera from Sony. And uh, Dmitry, it's your turn. Please uh, yeah. describe some features, what we have, and how it works. Please. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for giving me a word. Uh, so, hi, everybody, and I'm happy to greet everybody on today's webinar. So, let's briefly go through the main highlights and features. Uh, first of all, the RGB solution is based on Sony. 61 megapixel camera with a full frame and mechanical shutter, which is perfect uh, for the mapping purposes and photogrammetry. Uh, since the weight of any drone payload is very significant and affects on a flight time and consequently uh, the efficiency of the product and the whole set, we did our best to decrease this parameter without any loss of functionality of device. It's not a secret that Top Drone provides a PPK built in devices out of the box. Uh, this technology is outstanding for the clients who shall perform their works in the areas with no internet or even GSM connection and provides three to five centimeter accuracy for the final data. So there you go. Top Drone PPK model is integrated uh, in PT61 three in one camera, and all of the PPK features are available. Also, it's important to mention that PT61, likewise, P61 or P24 Tepadron ca cameras model line um, is ready to be used simultaneously uh, with lighter solution for the same flight. As I mentioned uh, on the previous slide, you can use Tepadron PT61 cameras simultaneously with lighter solution. On this particular picture, the camera is fixed on three axis gimbal uh, and uh, it is also possible to control the camera fully because it is fully integrated with DJI PSDK. One of the main ways of uh, using is mounting camera on three axis DJI proprietary gimbal. And all of the top of drone cameras are fully integrated with DJI PSDK, not only PD61. And there is no complicated manual of setting up your camera. Simply go to the camera settings directly from the DJI Pilot 2 app. And that's it. You can control the ISO, the uh, shutter speed, and the other parameters. On this slide, you can see the M350 with the set of equipment, and that's it. How it should, uh, how it uh, shall look like. Let's pay a bit more attention to a screenshot from the RC to have more understanding of how it works, uh, because we have the real data streaming. We have uh, the FPV view from the uh, M350 camera, and also in the left, uh, in the left bottom corner of the screenshot, we can see the movement uh, accordingly to the mission plan. Uh, moreover, we have the interchangeable multispectral lenses, which are provided by our partners, Agrowing Company, uh, and uh, it's uh, just an amazing feature of the product. 
there is no complicated way of interchanging. You just show on screw the standard lens and mount a multispectral one, and that's it. You can use it, your camera as three-in-one solution. It's ready. The flexibility of use for PT61 is uh, RGB plus thermal scanner or multispectral plus thermal scanner. Uh, so you can combine the data according to your needs. Um, for uh, PT61, likewise the P61 camera without the thermal scanner, multispectral lenses which are available are quad and sextop. Uh, the difference is on the screen. Uh, we've gone over the main parameters and it's time to move on the major feature of new solution, uh, the FLIR Bazon thermal sensor, uh, 320 or 640 model. Uh, it's optional, uh, depends on your needs. And during um, during the negotiation progress and asking me to send you the quotation, please, please tell me which exactly do you need and we will do it for you. So. Let's just double check the product design uh, before moving forward to the field works and data processing part. So we have the FLIR thermal sensor. We have a CNC aluminum light reframe. We have the LED indication, interchangeable lenses and end-to-end -end for workflow. After checking uh, all the features, we can finally move to the most interesting part of our storytelling, field works and the data processing steps. Uh, as you can see here, the PT61 is connected directly to the Skyport and is ready to work. No need for additional mounts or wiring or anything else. I mentioned earlier that we use DJI Pilot 2 for adjusting the settings of the camera. But when it comes to the fields uh, and, mission, and mission planning, uh, we use uh, the side mission planning software, which is UGCS Pro version or the Expert to perform a precise and terrain following flight. According to the slide, in this case, the terrain is almost flat, but since there is a small forestry, uh, we still need a well-planned AGL mission to achieve a high quality data. After uh, the field works, it's time to process the raw data. So we are opening the Topodron post-processing software and just uploading the data to the correct fields. I will briefly describe how it works and how it looks like so the first point is the image folder. You just need uh, to pick up the whole folder and uh, all of the images would be uploaded to the software automatically. After that, uh, we need to upload the uh, UBX file from the Topodrone PPK receiver uh, containing geotags for each image in your folder. Also, we need to uh, pick up the correct offset profile. In this particular case, we were using the M3 uh, plus PT61. So uh, we need to upload also the base station file uh, with the uh, recorded Rhinex to start the processing. And um, you can choose the preferred uh, local coordinate system with the shift datum. But in our case, for this particular processing, we were uh, using the WGS84 plus uh, ellipsoid height. Uh, which is by default, so no need to do anything. So that's how it looks like. Achieving the results, the color of the tux is symbolizing that all of the images have the Q1 solution, which means uh, a fixed solution in the other words. And now uh, we are ready to continue processing in an agrowing software. So first of all, uh, we can see that uh, image contains, uh, let's say, roughly four pictures in one, and it's necessary to separate it. Let's do it and separate each photo uh, to the specters, which will create a new volume of images accordingly to each lens of the quad lens. The NTVI is used to quantify vegetation greenness and is useful in understanding vegetation density and assessing uh, changes in plant health. NDVI is calculated as a ratio between the red and near infrared values. And also we can double check the position of our images. After completion of the raw data processing and assigning the precise uh, geotags, we can finally move forward to generating the results of our work. So we upload our image volume to the photogrammetry software. Uh, it depends on the preferable 
one, and we can begin the process. We will align our images from multispectral and thermal cameras and continue the generation of the results, such as uh, digital elevation model, such as auto mosaic, uh, point cloud, uh, and so on. And uh, in this case, I would like to uh, show you a bit more of the data which will be on the next slide. So uh, on this slide, we can see uh, the multispectral auto mosaic uh, combined with the point cloud from the LiDAR uh, on the left side and point cloud of the LiDAR plus the thermal scanner auto mosaic. And uh, we can start from the multispectral point cloud combined with the LiDAR. This is how it looks like. You can check your profiles. Uh, you can check the density of the point cloud, for example, and perform all of the works which are necessary. So let's move forward and check the thermal scanner. That's it. So nothing special. We were just combining uh, two parts of data and achieving the outstanding result, in my opinion, of course. Also, one of the uh, most fascinating results uh, are the auto mosaics, uh, the mapping. That's why we are here. Uh, on the top of the screen, you can see the auto mosaic for the multispectral uh, camera, and at the bottom, you can see the thermal scanner data. These auto mosaics were used uh, to colorize the point cloud on the previous step in the LiDAR 360 software, which I was showing to you just now, uh, to achieve these results. And I will, I will do it again. I will switch to another software just to show you uh, the detailization of the auto mosaics which you may achieve uh, using uh, this equipment. So that's the full auto mosaic for the multispectral. And let's just check the thermal scanner one. That was the brief uh, description and explanation of how the set of equipment will work, uh, what kind of data uh, you may achieve. And the last but not least, the application of the PT61. The most common application of uh, our brand new camera are agricultural sector, inspections of the construction sites, gas pipelines, power transmission lines, and etc. And uh, finally, it's just one tool, uh, one camera. So that's it. Thank you for attention. It was a pleasure to introduce you the newest Tepatron product, and I'm giving back the word to Alex. Thank you for brief introduction uh, in our product. Uh, we saw uh, that you started to ask uh, questions. Uh, after the presentation, we will have a question and answer section, and we'll answer on all your questions. And right now, let me ask uh, kindly ask uh, Ira to to share his uh, big experience and uh, uh, share with us uh, information about his really revol revolutionary product. Thank you Ira, very much, Alex, and uh, hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Uh, I'll have a very short presentation. I don't know how many of you are familiar with multispectral technologies, but I'll try to give a brief introduction, explaining what we do and why and the vision where we can go, especially with uh, products like this beautiful camera, and uh, Tripodrome just completed the integration with the IR sensor. So uh, Agro was established in uh, 2014, so we have quite a lot of experience. We started with vision that is very clear of enabling trustworthy near real-time early detection and identification of pests and diseases. Uh, well, when we talk about actionable data, it means that, you know, we need to shift from, and this is something we've been preaching to for the past seven years, shifting from what we call imprecise NDVI, which gives you just 
average knowledge about what's going in the field, with definite knowledge, knowing precise leaf level voltage spectral AI. Now, AI tend to be quite a big word these days, so people understand that there is possibility to do far better job than just looking at things and guessing what there is in the field and telling somebody to go and check because people don't want to go and check in the field. They want to get definite replies from you again what we exist in the field. Because growers don't care much about technology. You know, they don't care what equipment you are using. They ask, usually they ask three simple questions. The first one is, is there anything wrong in the field? Second one, if there is a problem, where is it? Exactly where is it? And the last question, which is the most important, what exactly is it? Because if you need to spray, spray blight or spray Colorado beetle means different chemicals. So if you don't have a definite really answer to that question, you are sort of uh, blind to the problem that you have and you need to go and check in the field. So as for agroing, we got the press award at the Commercial UAV Expo in 2019, the end of the year. And we're trying to, as uh, Jeremiah Carpowitz of the Commercial UAV News says, we're trying to, to give uh, sort of tools that are so outstanding in this uh, market and setting it apart from competitors in some ways, and I'll explain how, how, how different they are. First of all, this is the top of drone, the 61 megapixels camera without the IR, just simple, uh, uh, based on the Sony camera, which is lightweight. And in this case, we have uh, 10 bands of 12 megapixels each, each band, meaning, you know, the, the difference when we talk about 1.7 centimeter from 100 meters, uh, ground uh, resolution of 1.7 centimeters compared to four centimeters, it is not just twice or two and a half times more, it's two and a half by two and a half, meaning it's more than five times uh, greater than the highest resolution multispectral compet competition. When we talk about uh, sensors like Red Edge, that the, the resolution is 16 times, 16 times higher. So in this case, because uh, we have one sensor and four lenses in a single mount, we bypass problems of synchronization of the uh, parallax because of the proximity of the lenses. The dynamic range of the Sony sensor is far higher than any of the uh, small multi-camera solution that you have for the spectrum. And of course, we have here 10 beds, spectra beds from 405 to 850, which is far more than anything else. You have, in this case, four red beds, so you can do real wonders with it. You can see the graph on the bottom left of the, of the beds. They are like holes. It's not like bell shape where you have just, you know, a tip of the, of the, of the bed, but you get it all over. The, it's, it's unified all over the, the transmission. This is a sample of uh, taken from a count from uh, the quad lens with the uh, four images. Behind every lens, we have a multi bed pass filter. So every quadrant like this can have between one to three bends. Then now the center of the bench is mentioned here on the, uh, on the bottom left. You can see 55, 50, 30, which is quite similar to, to really picture, you know, where RTB. On the top, you can see 850, it's only 850 because 850 contaminates. Uh, the red and the, uh, the green and blue pixels, so we use only one band. This is a sample of the quad lens, and uh, these are the bands, of course. A very so on the bottom left, uh, the slide before that. Uh, there is also a possibility to replace one of these uh, lenses, you know, with white RGB, just putting a glass filter, getting uh, the bands to be from something like 400 to 630 or 615 getting like a normal RGB camera, if there is a need to have real uh, sort of white RGB plus multispectral in the same flight. And then the resolution is identical, 12 megapixels per band. It's very easy to get the overlapping. And the uh, distortion of the lens is very low. It's below 1%. This is the sextuple lens with 14 narrow bands. So we usually uh, sell it for research because in many cases, people do the research and after they found the research, they decide what, what 10 bands they want to use. And we try to, to get these 10 bands with the quad lens so they don't have to use because this is more, a far more expensive lens. But there's a possibility to use only the 10 bands. 
the faulty bed is used for research, and then the commercial solution deployment is done with uh, with tenders. This is a sample how it looks. You know, it's like say in every part of the image you have like six different uh, images of the same data. We crop this, we uh, split it, we align this. This comes with our preprocessing software, so you don't really have to bother with this. It's not something that customers have to do on their own. We supply the free software with that. These are the bands of the 14 bands. You can see that they are covering, uh, you know, the full range of uh, the spectrum. And uh, if there is a need to do some customization, this is something that we also do for specific uh, applications, as long as there is a business case. Right? Now, as for the IR, and this is the addition of uh, the new camera, where you have the FLIR sensor, so once you have IR between one micron to 1400 nanometer, the advantage is that you can get improved water content analysis. And this is not really where you don't really need very high resolution because for water content analysis, you actually look at the soil, you know, so where it's not that you need something like leaf level analysis. Improved set, uh, stress detection, it's mainly better, you know, for high altitude to detect areas, outlying areas. Improved crop classification. This, this can help also with the multispectral signatures. And uh, of course, the last thing, improved soil property assessment, like uh, nematodes, stuff that is not really on the ground, but uh, uh, the IR can penetrate below the ground and find where there are problems with the uh, nematodes and such uh, phenomena. Now, this is what agroing is about. We say remote and close sensing. You have NDVI flying, a drone flying high altitude, capturing the data, covering the whole field, then getting an auto photo. Then you analyze it with NDVI. In this case, we see three light green spots which are outlined, which are a problem. Then we send the drone from low altitude and when take the imagery from three, five meters above the crop. In this case, you see potatoes, this, this image was taken in Nottingham in the UK by one of our customers from the altitude of uh, three meters. The image is of 0 0.5 millimeter per pixel. With this kind of analysis, leaf level analysis, analysis it is first order analysis and not just something that is you know, uh, like a guesstimation, it's real analysis. Something that you cannot do with all these sensors that you see here on the screen because of the distance between the lenses. Once you have this kind of distance between the lenses, like in all these multi camera sensors, then you get parallax and you cannot really align the bands from a close distance. Add to it the fact that these sensors are for flow resolution. So if you take pictures from 10, 15 meters, in order to be to align them and you have 1.2 or 3 megapixels per band, you're not going to get what you need from a you know, from a leaf level. Now, Leaf level is important because of the multi multispectral signatures. What can see here, this is a demo software that we put, a demo site. You can see on the right side where you have the multispectral signature, in this case of blight. And when you look at the picture below it, you can see that the blight and the, the ground are of similar color. So if you try to analyze this using RGB, the chances that you will have many false negative and many false positive. So you don't want to have this and multispectral signatures allows you to do something that is far more accurate and robust. It's like, you know, the alarm of a car. When the alarm of a car goes off, people usually don't say, well, somebody's stealing my car. Usually they say, well, maybe a cat jumped from the car or somebody just bumped into it. You don't want to have this in, in the crop where you have some false alarm telling you go spray and you don't really need to spray because just because you mix the color of the ground, with the color of the leaves. In this case, you can see some samples of uh, multispectral signatures on the right side, which is rather easy. You know, you see the green spots, green on purple, the green is Colorado beetle. Even small hidden Colorado beetles below some leaves can be easily detected having the green on the, on the, pur on the uh, purple uh, color. When you look at the left side, this is Alternaria again. The signature is 100% clear, so you cannot mix it with shadows or stuff like this. Of course, uh, when you're working, we are not supplying the AI analysis. 
We don't supply the software for it because we don't want to compete with our customers. When customers, uh, analyzing companies come to us, we guide them, we help them, we instruct them how they can get better results using the multispectral bands, but we don't supply the solution because we don't want to compete with customers. Now, this is a screen that uh, you could show, Petra showed it before, you know, the screen of our pre-processing software, we can, we have here uh, a uh, batch conversion that you can convert uh, do uh, multispectral uh, radiometric calibration. You can do uh, relative illumination correction, split the bands, align the bands. All this stuff can be done, you know, by uh, this preprocessing software, preparing everything for uh, processing with uh, whatever radiometric uh, photogrammetric software you are using, whether this is PIX4D or, uh, or Bentley or uh, I don't know, Esri or whatever you're using. Now here we also supply in a single frame level with, with our free software, you can do all the NDVI stuff and the combinations of uh, different bands. You can choose the bands and then use any kind of the metrics that you see here on the screen that you can add your own uh, formulas into this uh, application. You can create your own palettes if you want. Because, you know, for many crops, when you go to leaf level, getting the right formula and getting the right palette could do wonders in the result that you get. Because uh, the palettes for detecting blight in uh, potatoes will be definitely uh, different from detecting uh, a white fly in cotton. So in order to do the adjustment for that, we give the free access to create the formulas and uh, get them into the software. Now, this is, uh, we always say, you know, the proof is in the pudding, which means the proof is in the eating of the pudding. And in this case, this is an orchard of almonds. You can see the trees, the dark green the trees are very healthy. The ones that are orange or close to, to yellow are very sick. And you can easily get five, six grade of uh, health that can be attached to each tree. And if you go back to this, uh, to this uh, orchard, Week after week, you can do the comparison and see what is the trend of the health of the trees. This is something, as I said, we don't do. We just explain how to do. Here is the real, you know, stuff. This was taken from 100 meters, and you can see the quality of the imagery. This is the kind of uh, different palettes, you know, and different metrics that show you better, getting better understanding of what you really have in the old chart. And this is a short list of all our uh, partners and uh, customers. You can see here Sony, my own digital, and of course, Topodron in the center and the upper part. Thank you very much. And it's back to you, uh, uh, Ira, thank you very much for deep diving into your technology uh, and let us uh, to answer on questions. I'll sum summarize uh, questions what you uh, brought to us. Uh, the several questions about the carriers for this product. Uh, first of all, uh, you can use uh, this uh, camera uh, with, the drone, with drones, uh, with uh, DJI drones. For that, we have... Uh, uh psdk gimbal and uh, in this way our camera is fully integrated in dji with the dji uh, so you can control uh you can control through your remote you can observe the live view during your missions you can uh, change the parameters and uh, i would like to point it out uh, your attention uh, when you install uh, AgroWing lenses and convert this camera to multispectral, uh, in this way you will have a unique uh, solution when you can control uh, uh, your working field through the live uh, streaming. No one competitors can demonstrate the same. Uh, Additional things, uh, you can install this camera on uh, VTOLs and we had, uh, we already did some installation and, ca and can uh, recommend it our partners uh, with integration. And uh, right now we are working closely with uh, drone producers, non-DJIs, 
uh, for deep integration with them. So uh, here are some uh, levels uh, of integration, DJI, non-DJI, drones, VTOLs, etc., etc. Uh, the price, uh, of course, it's most important part for, for clients, customers, and partners, uh, depends on the configuration. Uh, configuration for what type of carriers you would like to use uh, and uh, depends on the clear sensor inside. As Dmitry uh, demonstrated to you, it's uh, two types of sensors, uh, QVGA and uh, VGA, so 320 or 640. And the price depends. Uh, if you check our website uh, and check the uh, and check the Configuration for this cam camera, I will uh, explain to you. So, uh, Topadron PT61 plus AgroWing Quad, uh, the price is 16,500. 16,500. Uh, and uh, for uh, Sextupal, for, uh, for Sextupal AgroWing lenses, uh, 19,500. Let, let me add one thing that I didn't mention before. And mm -hmm. there are some applications where people use our sensor and the multispectral for a video, doing video, multispectral video. This is possible because Sony cameras allow you to do 4K video. And when you do it, you can use the video for multispectral scanning for certain applications. Better one, uh, one time to see than 10 times uh, to hear. Uh, I will. And demonstrated to you how easily it to uh, remove. So here is the lenses, and you can put another type. That's it. And when it works, so you can uh, switch uh, with easily RGB into multispectral and back. And uh, let me mark additional things. Uh, another question about uh, software. Uh, all software for post-processing, for working with multispectral images are included in the price. Is a standard, uh, is a standard uh, specification. But of course you need some uh, additional uh, software package. I believe you have it, uh, something like Pix4D or uh, Metashape. So it doesn't matter. The main idea that it's a fully end-to-end -end solution. So right now you can purchase this uh, fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic camera and uh, immediately start to work. And uh, I, I think we can uh, share some our uh, deep working with, with some agricultural guys who uh, yeah. deep involved with uh, with such product because uh, it's a unique technology which helps them uh, uh, really fast uh, to get uh, information uh, to post process it and uh, make their decision very very quickly. So with this product we penetrate into agricultural field. And with the thermal uh, sensor, of course, it's a, a very good step in inspection uh, field. So you <clears throat> you can expand uh, uh, your strategy and started to work with uh, companies who ask for some uh, inspection service. So any any other questions? Okay. Yes. So the, yeah. question, the question is a very good one, so I'll explain. It's very simple. The beds, first of all, they are fully separated. We adjusted the location of the of the multi-band pass filters according to the uh, quantum efficiency of the Sony sensors. They don't. They, there is no way since we are utilizing the bio the bio filter. So every uh, the sensor can capture, you know, a green, blue, and red pixels. Once we use the multi band pass filters, they go separately. Uh, the only place where there was contamination is with the 850 because NIR contaminates all the pixels without any separation. And uh, we do the separations and we, we do the alignment in the pre processing software. There is a beautiful tool that allows you to do automatic uh, adjustment of the alignment of the, of the pixels. 
the alignment is done in tr translation, meaning this is done full pixel, just horizontal and vertical, no uh, artificial production of pixels. And the alignment is amazing. If you get some, uh, we can provide to interested parties data sets that you can check and see because we believe that uh, I always say, you know, don't believe a single word we are saying, try it yourself at home. Because I believe this is the best way, you know, to, to get it. And once we share some data sets, people understand uh, the huge gap between what they are used to see about spectral to what we supply. So I urge you, anybody that has any doubts or want to test, please write us and we'll share data sets with you. One, yes, one picture, one image contains all bands. So if you have a quad lens, as I showed before, you know, you have the quadrants. Some quadrants contain three bands, some of them two bands, and one of the quadrants one band. Ira, there is another one question. Uh, does any calibration of the multispectral cameras prior to each flight is needed? Yes, uh, well, radiometric calibration can be done using the x ray the classic, classic board. This is a target board that you can take the pictures before the flight. You can take one picture and then do it. Uh, Sony has one huge advantage, which is not perfect, but it's far better than nothing. In the sense that we, when we use the camera, the F number is always 6 or 5.6. The F number is not changed. By the way, it's a rather high number because it's only in the center of the, of the lens. It's not like a 1.2 or 2, you know, it's just 5.6 or 6. And we, uh, and we recommend using uh, a, a shutter priority of uh, 1,000 or 1,600. And the only thing that changes during the flight is the ISO. And because of Sony's uh, rather sophisticated processor on the camera, if you look at the, at the data set, you'll see that it's more or less aligned. You know, even if there are clouds here and there, it's not like uh, if you are using uh, a, a, the pre ISO priority, you'll find that with uh, some sensors, you'll find that the, the data set tends to be very sort of varied in terms of lighting, some of it dark, some of it light. With Sony sensors, you see that uh, once you shut the priority, Sony helps you keep the lighting more or less uh, even, and uh, it makes the, the radiometric calibration far easier to, to correct than if you use the, uh, the ISO priority. We also support, as I said, you know, relative illumination because you know that the relative illumination means that the center of the lens is always a bit lighter than what we have in the edges. So we have the, the correction for that as well. Colleagues, uh, for, <clears throat> for any specific questions like sample data sets on the different flights, don't hesitate to contact us through our email. Just write us a request, uh, info at topodrome.com or uh, ask to say, uh, to provide to you an additional information. Oh, oh, oh. So uh, while Dmitry uh, typing, uh, I will answer uh, about live live video feeds. Uh, live video feed. It depends. Uh, it depends on the integration. And right now we work uh, hardly uh, that we will uh, introduce the full integration with other drones. But uh, better to send your drone models and uh, model, and uh, we will answer to you. Uh, is it uh, involved in our integration uh, program or not? We have a few customers that are using, as I said, video, but they are doing it. Uh, they are using the analysis after the flight and not in real time. We definitely see a case, a very good cases for doing it in real time. There's no question about it. I believe in the future it will have to be supported. I can see another one question, and I think it would be easier for me to reply verbally. So regarding the workflow and uh, processing, uh, uh, you are asking that the last is the orto mosaic. Uh, so uh, generally, um, until you will uh, do all of the raw data processing, such as topodrone post-processing and agarwing software, you won't be able to do the correct orto mosaic with the accuracies uh, and uh, the good qual and the quality. So uh, generally, first of all, you need to 
you need to calculate the precise image centers in top of drone post processing in PPK model. After that, you will go to AgroWing software for the uh, multispectral processing. And only after that, you will uh, align all of your data in PIX4D, generate the DEM or DSM, it depends on your needs. And after that, it would be possible for you to make the auto mosaics. Dmitry, can you answer on the quality of the RGB images and the height of light? Uh, let me let me uh, one thing. We are now in the final. We are in the final uh, stages of the integration. It will be announced in a few weeks, probably, on the final integration with Pix4D, having the cameras that you will have just to check the camera from the list of cameras that you are using when uh, you use the Pix4D, and uh, it will be far easier, smoother process. I saw that there was a question regarding the how low one can fly to have quality imagery. Uh, what is the frame rate? So uh, the frame rate of the of the camera, as far as I remember, is about uh, one uh, one click per second, right? And uh, I think this is one about one one frame per second that you can capture, right? Alex froze. Yeah, no, no, no. I am here because uh, it's it's an additional question uh, about GSD. Okay. So before that, Robert, first of all, they, they ask how, how, what frame rate, uh, what is the frame rate that you can take? I think it's about one, one or one point two seconds per frame with the camera. Am I right? And regarding the distance, you know, with a multispectral, you can take pictures as low as uh, two and a half. Two meters from uh, from the from the crop. Uh, regarding you know the RGB camera, if you use RGB, it depends on the Sony lens. You know, but um, some of the lenses you can take it. Uh, you can use it even for macro. Uh, Dmitry, you can, about first of all, you yeah. do for the multi spectrum, you can do first of all you do the old mosaic and then you do the processing. Absolutely. In most software, it's like this. You know, we offer with our software the ability to do it on a frame level. But this is just for the sake of uh, sort of demonstrations and if you have something that is really small, but if you are using uh, software like fix for me, you first do the auto mosaic and then you do the, uh, the analysis. You can get also using our software with all the mosaic that you, you do use the, that you combine with uh, using uh, something like a Bentley or a optics for me. The ground resolution from 50 meters, the ground resolution of the quad lens is about uh, 0 0.85 centimeter because from one meter from 100 meters it's 1.7 centimeter. Pavel, does it Terry, does it answer your question? Uh, 1.7 centimeter from 1.7 centimeter for 100 meters, 50 meters. We just cut it to you know to the resolution to be double. The resolution is double, you know. Uh, every pixel takes every centimeter takes more pixels. According to RGB and multispectral, uh, it depends on the type of RGB lenses. So, uh, as well as multispectral. Yes, and Ira, uh, did you answer uh, the question about plant count when software needs less than uh, zero point five centimeter pixel? Yeah, from 50 meter, from 50 meters per pixel, this is uh, 50 meters. This is uh, 0 0.85 centimeter per pixel. It's less than one centimeter per pixel. You know, when you go to three meters, the resolution is about 0 0.5 millimeter per pixel. How to become a partner? Uh... You you will send us uh, an email uh, info at tapadron.com. And uh, uh, after that, we will cooperate with you. There's one question I'd like to reply regarding the counting of uh, counting of plants. Uh, from our experience, you know, if you want to do less than 0 0.5 centimeter per pixel, uh, first I think this is uh, uh, it sounds a bit uh, a bit too much to me. I believe that probably. If you uh, fly with our quad lens at 50 meters, you'll be able to do counting even at the, 
uh, pineapples at uh, advanced uh, growth because the multispectral signature of these plants will, even if the plants are already joined together, uh, there is this typically you will find be able to find the, the, the tunnel, like a, a multispectral signature that separates the plants from each other. You know the center of the plant from the from the uh, surrounding. So, uh, but in any case, if you want to do 0 0.5 centimeter per, per pixel, it's about flying like 30 meters above the crop. For the indices, for the quadrants, we supply, you know, about 20, but it, as I said, the software is open for, to, for any, any, any index that you want to add, you know. Uh, we support uh, uh, NDVI, GNDVI, ENDVI, ARVI, uh, MSABI, Sabi, whatever, you know, there are so many of them. That, that I, I think we support something like 20 or 25 or even more in, in that sense, but you can add any formula that you want to add and you can customize also the uh, the palettes with colors that you want to, uh, any kinds that you want to add. The palettes can be of uh, five uh, bands or the palettes can be of uh, 20 or 40 bands. So you can, uh, this is fully customizable. It's uh, it's really good to see uh, very uh, good and professional questions, uh, mostly about uh, multispectral. Yeah. Why? Uh, it means that uh, customers started to recognize uh, the uh, possibility of this solution. Right. Uh, but for us, uh, it's uh, it's a last step because we introduced <laughs> our uh, P61 and the P24 camera last yeah. season. And right now it's a, a new step forward. It's a new lead yeah. uh, with uh, additional uh, additional thermal layers. Just uh, yeah. try to imagine that uh, in parallel with uh, multispectral layers, you can provide for, for guys who are really involved in agriculture additional two layers. And combination can present it to you uh, so much uh, information about the current status of the um, grain, uh, vegetation, etc., etc., etc. Uh, sorry, we uh, switch yes, between. Ask about the auto, so last thing, uh, yes. ask about the, there was one question about the auto mosaic. So we don't do mm -hmm. what we don't do best. So there are better companies doing uh, auto photo and auto mosaics. This is not our business. And uh, you can use, you know, whether this is, uh, you can use Big4D, you can use Bentley, you can use Agisoft, uh, Icarus, whatever, you know, anybody will do. Uh, yes, but, about... you know, but I think any questions, you know, guys, you have my email. It's very simple. It's ira I -R -A at agroing.com. Just drop a line, ask me any questions that you want to ask, and I'll be happy to reply. Uh, yes, uh, uh, about RPK and PPK, we recommended to you, uh, strongly recommended to use a PPK. Uh, you know the limitation of RPK, but there is uh, a possibility as well. With the, with the new one, it's uh, inside of. I have additional question for you about four lenses, about in the, uh, indices. So I replied to all the indices. Yes, I said we support, we support uh, you can see it in the, in the screen capture that you showed before. Uh, we supply many, many, more than 20 indices and uh, it's customizable. You can add whatever you want to the pre-processing software, you can add your own formulas, your own indices, you develop something new, no trouble. Mm -hmm. For multispectral, we recommend the uh, overlapping 60% side, 50% top. And about uh, about RGB overlapping, depending on the conditions, and uh, Dmitry will answer to you right now. Yes, it depends on your conditions and the area that you are trying to cover. So generally, uh, if if it's just a field, it's possible to uh, give it like 70 on 60. If there is a forestry, you may uh, increase it from uh, eight, uh, for 80 to 70. But generally, it depends on the uh, on the area uh, and on the height of your forestry or if it's mountain and so on so on so um, i cannot tell you exactly which uh, overlapping will work for you until i don't know um, the exact conditions or kml file on the info tapadron.com and i will help you
uh, as uh, as we already told. Um, the it's the interchangeable lenses. So um, you are buying the PT sixty one camera with the RGB, and uh, additionally you purchase the uh, multi spectral one. So it would be possible to use both lenses uh, depending on your needs and exact situation. There's a question here about the quad lens. Quad lens RGB camera is included. It's not RGB. The camera is an R. You can sell the same camera, except for RGB and for quad and for multispectral. The only difference is in the lenses, but the camera is the same camera. Um, and also the question regarding the lidar plus multispectral. If I understood you correctly, you want to use the payload simultaneously on the drone. So in that case, it is better to uh, prepare the mainly prepare the mission for the uh, for the camera, for example, and to um, to edit your uh, lidar mission, like for the side overlap and so on, uh, and. Uh, in that way, because uh, if you if we will compare with the uh, two hundred plus lighter, in that case uh, it would be possible to do mainly for uh, mainly for the camera. If we will uh, compare it with the one hundred lighter, in that way uh, we need to double check the area because sometimes it is better to do the separate flights. Sometimes it is okay to do the. Um, double payload flight. So uh, everything depends on your area uh, generally and uh, on the uh, lenses and lighter uh, that you are about to uh, choose. So in that case, it is better to like, you know, have a private conversation. I think so. Uh, about simultaneously uh, multispectral and RGB. Uh... First of all, it depends on your task. Of course, you have to to do the uh, mission with uh, multispectral lenses and the mission with uh, RGB lenses. Yeah, but I explained, you know, that you can take the quad lens and yes. use one of these lenses or patrol lenses as, uh, as wide RGB, so you can do RGB and multispectral at the same time. However, the multispectral uh, lens that you will have will probably be Something I don't I don't recall. I have to look, but I think it will be eight uh, bands plus RGB plus white RGB. You can check in our presentation slide uh, slide where Ira presented quad uh, quad lens, and here is uh, one of the band is the RGB. And the RGB resolution is identical, twelve megapixels, which is identical to the other bands. <clears throat> it's very easy to do the overlapping between them. Yes, uh, there is the first task and the second. Uh, for your for your RGB mission, we have to know the quality of your RGB uh, outputs. If twelve megapixels is enough, uh, then you may you may perform only one mission. But if you need a really strong uh, quality uh, uh, in this way, you have to use. Uh, RGB lenses and do and perform the RGB mission only. Yeah. Ira, again, uh, for you, uh, GDS for lenses, uh, GD, uh, GSD for lenses, sorry. Well, resolution again, it's, uh, one from the quad lens is uh, yeah, for, for 1.7 centimeter from uh, 100 meters and uh, 50 meters, 0 0.85 centimeters. If you are using it for forestry, for example, you'll get it from 200 meters, you'll get a, a resolution of 3.4 centimeters per, uh, per pixel. Uh, I suppose that the best uh, way is uh, to continue to ask us uh, <laughs> whenever you, <laughs> if you want. So we are open for cooperation. We are ready to provide you an additional information any uh, uh, data sheets any technical data so feel free to discuss it because uh, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, many cases the main uh, reason to use uh, different technology depends on, on your outputs what the uh, what type of outputs uh, do you need or your customer needs so for these we can uh, uh, 
formulate the technical part, uh, workflow part, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and combine for you a fully workable solution. No, I didn't mention it, but we have a customer in Australia using our quad lens for service from the altitude of one kilometer, and it's still effective. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course. We have uh, lots, lots of uh, brilliant examples. Uh, one time during our Indonesia, uh, our presentation in in Indonesia, we demonstrated our uh, RGB results with uh, quad lenses, and uh, it was a positive shock for the audience because then yeah. they recognized the quality. <laughs> uh, it was. Uh, uh, total uh, silence and uh, started. Wow! <laughs> yes, because because the lenses are made of glass and steel, and mm -hmm. the f stop is five point six for uh, for uh, for the sextuple and f six for the quad, and because of that, uh, the images are rather sharp. You know, even if you take them from a long distance, you still get very very high quality images. And we know that quality is about everything. You know, it's garbage in, garbage out, quality in, quality out. There's no there no way to do any shortcuts with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I think that uh, it's time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's time to wrap up. Yes, <laughs> it's time to say thank you for everybody, for our visitors, for our friends, partners, and uh, <clears throat> for especially for Ira Dmitri. Thank you very much. See you next Thank time. It was a pleasure. Yes. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.